to the reviewers today I'm going to fix up a dry joint in this set top box HDTV receiver I've got to plug into a HDTV ready Celestial Chang Hong generic Chinese brand reprojection TV from 2002 just plugs in through the component I think it could be SD, uh, not SD, um, it might be 720 HD so it might not be a full HD box but yeah, that's how it plugs in. Component, that's the, uh, yeah, that's the old new form of HD. What I'm going to do, I'm going to set the TV the component, the input for the set-top box, so I'm going to find it. There it is. Two, no, no, not that one. Convergence is a little bit out in this. It's got shit capacitors in it. Generic Chinese things. Okay, component, now if I turn it on. Should get a signal from the box. There you go. Yeah, try to turn the volume up. Doesn't seem to want to respond. That batteries must be flat. Yeah. If I tap the box, it's the sound breaks up and everything. Yeah. There's dry joints in the box, the picture plays up on it and the sound doesn't work. So if I move these, the sound will come on intermittently. So in this little receiver here, there's a lot line of pins. This receiver itself I'm talking about here. That actually picks up the signal. There's a little line of pins in the board where it's soldered. And some of those uh, joints are cracked and there's a very poor soldering job on there. And also with these ones. These are connectors here on the board. I've also got a full of cracked little dry cracked solder. So I'm going to pull it apart, show you what it looks like. Here's other channels. Now, if I get the remote control for the HD, where we've got zoom, HD widescreen, that's cool. That info, let's see, see what it says, how much HD we've got. Doesn't tell you, doesn't tell you, um, HD 720 watt. There you go, you got HD on HD TV on a projection TV. So I'm gonna pull this apart and I'll show you what happens when I tap it. It should break up and freeze and I tap it. Yeah, it's intermittently. You see it break up every now and then. But yeah, I'll pull it apart and I'll show you what the solder joints look like. They're pretty tiny, so you need good eyesight and a solder. Good magnifying glass and a fine point soldering iron to fix them. And I'll show you how to do that. Also, just another uh, quick note. To hook up these component boxes, one thing I forgot to do, you know, this component is only picture only. You gotta plug the sound in for your normal RCA, for your sound. So that goes there. And this LA points to the next connector, which is these two, which are your sound. So the picture and the sound are separate with component. That's how it all hooks up. You've got a component, which is an easier picture only. You're not getting any sound, you're going to plug these into a sound, which is here, the, uh, the normal SD RCA sound outputs. Your TV should have sat below here, the component symbol. It has like an arrow pointing that way, and it has a connection here that it's pointing to. So they're your sound inputs. So that's how it all works here. Okay. Now that I've done that, I'll pull it apart and I'll tap it like this carefully exactly where the joint is and I'll show you what happens, what I mean. Okay, here's what's inside the set-top box. It has an LG brand receiver and one of these pins here on the board has a bad solder joint when I tap it. Yeah, see? It's a soft tap is enough to make the picture break up and intermittently cut out. And under here, so I've got dry joints as well. So I've got to fix them up very carefully solder each one of these pins properly down. Yeah, that's what the box looks like. It's a power sonic with HDMI interface or high definition media interface or multimedia, whatever it stands for. Power supply. I've got a spin-off of Elna capacitor here. Kelna instead of Elna. Got a generic cap there. Sam Wa Korean capacitor. Some generic ones, they all sound fine, they haven't blown up or nothing, so I've got another Sam 
Zon, S A N, X O N, it says on there. So if it's Korean shit, has a little tall amp fuse, the little relays, or I think they relays. No, capacitors. Yeah, filter, that's a filter circuit. AC filter. Yeah, there's your switching transistor. Switches the thing, stand wire and all that sort of stuff. Main transformer. And that's your RS232. And this little port here is your, um, like an infrared thing on the lead. You have an infrared hidden discreetly. Have a box hidden discreetly, so it's good for that. And then I don't even know what they're for, so. That's all your menus and your setup box firmware is all stored on. And I think that's your picture processing chip or something like that. Yeah, I'll turn it all off and make sure it's all safe. And then I'll start soldering each one of these bad joints underneath this board. So underneath this board, you don't see anything. This is all surface mount technology, this. Okay, viewers, I've got a 5.12 volt automotive soldering iron. Hook up to my homemade supply it's 12 volt DC obviously as I said in previous video it's a supply if you look carefully here I don't know if the camera may pick it up but if you look carefully with a good set of eyes and a magnifying glass you'll be able to see fine cracks in the solder work on those pins if I look carefully at them I can see some it's a very poor the solder hasn't flowed and connected in Oops, there you go. Adhered properly on those pins. Same with these little ones here. Yeah, let's zoom into it here. That pin there is a very tiny crack in it. The camera can pick it up. Yeah, I don't know if the camera can see that, but there's a little crack in it. Very, yeah, dry joint there. I've got all three of those back pins. Now these ones, I've got cracks. And for the hell of it, I'm probably going to touch up the front pins just to be safe. Here we've got flux cracked around it, so our dry joints there on the HDMI port. There's not so bad, but nothing, everything else just seems to be pretty good. So, while the soldering iron's heating up, I get that really hot. And I very carefully touch up all these pins. This is how it all comes apart. So separate board just separates here, everything just plugs in and bolts down. It's pretty simple. So we've shoved off and we'll see how hot it's getting. Yeah. It's not quite hot yet. It's gonna be ages for this thing to warm up. Okay viewers, well that's what I've done all the resoldering. Didn't turn out quite as neat and tidy as well as I expected it to be, but I've done it. So this cheap ass fucking Dick Smith solder would have worked better. Made in Australia, I could expect better than that. It is good stuff, but yeah, with this sort of soldering tip and a no flux remover, but I probably should get one sometime. But the flux remover will probably make it easier to solder. Yeah, but I did it anyway. <laughs> Not, no one will ever see it, so as long as there's a good there's a good connection, electrical connection on all those pins that I've already soldered, so that's the main thing. So there you go, I'm going to put it all back together. Have yours, it's all reassembled. It's all done. It's all put back together, that's good now. Now I've got to fix up the dry joints in the TV. Yeah, you can see the refreshment, right, on the camera. You can see lines and interference in the picture, so... It's probably, most probably bad capacitors on this for sure, being a generic TV. All the channels are there. Yep, they're all there. Seven mate. Yeah, it hasn't launched yet. HD Sport. There we go. No more interference when I tap the box. Dry joints fixed. Oh, the channel was on. Yeah. That's it, all fixed. And that's how you fix the set top box. All the new resoldering. That's fine, it's interesting. Thanks for watching.